Souls heal for less, Death Coil heals for less, and so on. And here we go. We've got uh, our first game underway. Open Division has started again, and I'm so happy to see it. And that you're with me again, Tetcher. Game number one, Team Taras Rodzina versus Team Singularity. That's going to be in Battlefield of Eternity. The battle begins in Indeed. So... We're starting it off on the left hand side. A significant push here for uh, Team Terras Rosina. Being able to use those impalers to put some pressure, allowing Maltiel free reign for a moment with that immortal and continuing the defense here. This is a five man by Team Singularity. They would like to make a pick off and they can. Power slide onto Anubarak. Nicely done. Able to pick up the Anubarak with that power slide. And Tracer, a beautiful hammer of justice coming in from Henning. You can see the race potential looks like it is in favor of Singularity as they did have the full five man there and they already had the big head start thanks to fighting under the enemy immortal and being able to drop some nice damage onto it while also killing the enemies. And I do think when you look at these team compositions that it was expected that Team Singularity will do a little bit better pre-level 10. We have Maltiel hidden behind a pretty strong quest here, Black Harvest, and he crucially does not yet have Tormented Souls. The double support from Team Singularity makes it very difficult for Team Terra's Rutina to get a pick off. So I would say this is the expected result. And the goal for Rutina here will be to mitigate as much damage as they can. But it looks like they yeah. will lose a fort. So they're going to claw all the way back from a full level. Oh, hang on, Arthur's in a little bit of trouble. Dropped his Icebound Fortress, but you can see that 25 extra armor trying to turn around onto Glue Hammer. And the Glue Hammer is regretting his life choices. He gets taken down by Laramus. Yeah, and Anubarak really is very unforgiving in that sense. He doesn't have the health pool like Arthas with Icebound Fortitude, Army of the Dead, Coil, the attack speed slows. If Anubarak ever bro charges in and he's like, sorry, just a joke, my bad, <laughs> you will always die against the composite team that is ready and isn't otherwise being pressured because that's such a long cooldown that you do not have bro charge available until level 20 where you might have rewind or 16 with the epicenter cooldown reduction. So that charge in on Arthas was a decision that definitely carried some risk because you don't just kill an Arthas very easily, uh, especially without Tracer there with the pulse rounds, the quantum spike, so uh, overstepping there by the Onubarak. Couldn't agree more, he, ca he is a risky Ooh. one. Wow, Dragon wow. Arrow and an immediate blow. The defense carries on. Tormented Souls, Twilight Dream are still available. We can see the quantum spike is charged up as well the damage is there but the setup crucially with hinterlands blast is a little bit missing he hits a lot of targets though hinterlands is coming back thanks to that cdr yes it is guru it's gonna stay alive no one in position to follow up on that lovely power slide by laranus but it does get him out safely a little bit of damage just a bit just a few <laughs> percents there by terrorist rotina as they will face that monster immortal now Every little bit helps when it comes to this kind of defense, especially with the amount of aggression that Singularity are putting on with this kind of push, looking for any opportunity. Boomerang value coming in from Falstaff there, dropping some damage onto Kasi, forcing a new to put in a little bit more armor. Guru burning a blink to try and make the aggressive play, but wasn't able to get near enough. Wow. And goodbye, Falstad. Another great Dragon Arrow in engaged. Yeah, very nice. And it all started with the Hydra flank there on Arthas coming from the side. Nothing scarier than an Arthas who's already in a good <laughs> position, using his mount to get near and striking from the shadows. The Howling Blast doomed Falstad as ETC quickly capitalized. Lorana's power sliding through with the Dragon Arrow from Hanzo to finish the deal. And that kill means that Ter Team Singularity will be able to grab the third consecutive Immortal. So Tracer Mouth really stuck up that Uther quest really quickly. I still there on the camp. Uh, Hinterlands Blast hits four to five people. It, it four. Hit four members as Shekhal goes deep, but the Dragon Arrow finishes him off. He went far past his team. The Locust Swarm keeping a new life for the time being, but the beautiful Divine Shield Moshpit finishes Tracer off the Twilight Dream. Doof dropping some crazy damage, but will get rooted down by Hydra and taken out. Three kills going over to Singularity. All right, here we go. Another Hinterlands Blast with the double hit, but it is not going to be enough. Maltia went a little bit too deep there, unable to be supported by his team. Tormented Souls notwithstanding. And we see Team Singularity here grabbing the first map in this best of three of Cup 1 of Open Division. 
Well, Falstad is actually killing everyone here, but he's killing them a little bit too slow. It now goes Nuti, Lanaros, and Henning. Still alive. That's going to be it. We'll start to see out how that solo lane plays out. Now, there's a few things in favor of Malthiel. For example, if he ever lands the uh, Reaper's Mark on Rexar and Misha at the same time, Rexar... Uh, Malthiel heals more from heroes than from minions, so that's a double hero's worth of healing that he gets essentially against the value of a single hero. So if he gets the mark on both, he has the, the advantage. But furthermore, if Malthiel gets a level 4 talent, the uh, Black Harvest, he can stack that more rapidly on someone as Rexar as well. But the question is, who will be standing on that shrine most of the time? Both teams have a very defensive composition, especially Terra's Rotsina. So they're not really looking to make anything happen. And that does lead to a more dull and slow early game. But it leads into extra tension as well. For the first one that gets an advantage shall be able to ride that to massive advantages. And this might just be it with the Divine whoa, Shield coming whoa. on the cusp of death. The blinding glare. They're nearly getting the kill on Knuti. It would have been enough if the Divine Shield was in the final stages. And that was a very quick capitalization by Terrace Rotina trying to get a kill there. But still, a lot of pressure coming in to that top lane and very good rotation from the Greymane. It looks like the only lane that has a bear is doing the best. <laughs> it looks like we need more Ursine power in all the other lanes here as Hydra is carrying this game on his back for now. But now he's getting ganked by Gluhammer. Blessed Shield comes in. He will get taken out. Instead, joining with his team to force a team fight pre-16. But that opportunity is vanishing like snow before the midsummer sun. As level 16 is on the cusp, and that creates a big advantage. In comes wow. Tracer as well with the quantum spike, the melee, and finishing off Greymane. And that is that. That should be, if well capitalized on, a Dragonite for Terrace Rotina. Greymane, Greymane was one auto away from getting into lethal range with that go for the throat, but the bless shield from Johanna allowed him to turn it round. Shekel is getting deja vu, but this time he's going to attempt to flee, heals himself up, and a surprise guru from the back could turn this round. The party give focusing on Hydra, trying to catch up. Misha cannot save her master. <laughs> Clever escape by Malthiel there with the turnaround with Tracer as well. Hydra. Oh, Misha, <laughs> please come back to me. <laughs> there we go. They got it. And the Dragonite goes over to Terra's Rodzina. Once again, this keep already low, but they are crossing the aptly dubbed Bridge of Death. <laughs> to bridge Sorry. this bridge, you must answer me this question three. Can you kill the keep? Can you go for the core? <laughs> Looks like the answer is no there. Can you kill the bear? Yes, you can. Nice and easy. And uh, Bishop Raffle's not up anyway, so that is not so bad. Hydra, he does have Feign Death. Not very useful now, though, with no Misha. There's that blinded by the light shield value. Oh, no, it's just Storm Shield. Blinded by the light is currently inside the Dragon Knight. And he's being able to teleport away. Dodge the Dragon Knight pun. The Dragon Knight will pop here, but the health bars are so high on the members of Terra's Rodzina here. They are just going straight for the core. Yeah, very well executed. Everyone splits, preventing taking core damage. There are plenty of damage. Terra's Rotina and Dragon Shire from the top keep. As much as the early game I thought was going to be in favor of Team Singularity, Stitches has been doing a pretty good job there to put threat on the side of uh, Terra's Rotina. And that's a good hook. The Atango is perfect. That was a very good kill. The power slide there, you know, ETC thought he saw an opportunity on Malfurion. I honestly agree with you. I thought Hanzo would be able to get some uh, get some good damage out. And here's what we expected to happen. A beautiful power slide focusing on Suguru. And Guru, <laughs> what? Oh, there we go. Feral Lunch coming in to finish the job. But that was almost a superb save by Gluhammer. And it's still a good move. You end up saving a number of the gems. Had Gul'dan had more gems, you would save even more. Now maybe it was like one, three or five or whatever. But that's still a good move, being able to rescue these heroes almost. And finally, the job will be done. They're finally able to take out Shekel in that bot lane here, and these gems will be denied. And they're going to try and to get as much value of this out, of, uh, out of this as possible, due to the fact that they're already on even talents. They're just behind now, but a beautiful kill. Perfect timing. With the web we were just about to spawn, this bot lane is now in serious trouble. And that's really greedy. This was a value play by the Haka. 
just trying to get a little bit of uh, that drag tongue value to trade damage. It was never going to lead to a kill on the Yorick. And as such, it was a risk for a very small chance of a small reward. Instead, the Hakka gets taken out and Siku pays the price for that greed, trying to get a trade. And now he loses the entire bottom fort for it without even being able to soak experience. Yeah, everything will get taken out there. That is going to be very upsetting and going to give uh, the hacker a little bit of a harder time in, in terms of soaking, but at least he's next to the bruiser camp if he wants to assist with that. And you'll most likely yes, get stunned oh, right away again. Through jump, nicely done. Ooh. Oh, well, wow, well. the dragon arrow has the setup here. Quite unexpected. Nuti getting dragged in as well. They're not able to kill anyone, though. Damage output, a little bit distracted. Thanks to Shrickle here, but... Uh, the camp blocked <laughs> the hook to save the Dahaka here, but Dahaka will fall. And I think that was not a bad move by Siku, actually. You see four heroics being used, maybe three until that point, and Gluehammer, the golden boy with the 40 gems, was going to get attacked. Hanzo Knuti there, he had about 15% life, and he would have liked to add as much damage as possible on stitches, but was unable to do so. Here, Shikul, just sure to catch a Kasi. Wow, that's uh, definitely limited damage sustained there, there uh, by uh, Team Singularity. Oh, the turnaround! No way! No, oh, the stitches with the 30 gems. Guru in danger as well. The crucial misstep. Hook missing. Lingering nonetheless at the enemy gate. Now the complete turnaround there as two kills are made. Team Singularity with the massive turnaround. Drain momentum value from Hydra there, getting so much chase potential as they are able to, like you said, get a beautiful turnaround and deny so many gems. Thinks that the boss will go to Terrace Rotina. Great relief for them to get that ETC kill because it means they get to save their mid keep and grab the boss, and this could be a way to get back into the game. The mid keep's gonna go down though. The fact is, the boss was predicted by Singularity here, and as such, they react by taking down Midkeep. If they can get out of here alive, they still have a fort and a keep to defend this boss through. Hook not finding any purchase. The Yorick goes for the Entomb despite missing Drain Hope. Now using the Ominous Wrath to reduce two people's damage. A little bit disjointed here for Team Singularity. I'm getting nervous for them. Hydra does not have to self-sustain without the Drain Hope. That first Drain Hope to stay alive. 19 gems. Does he actually get away? The absolute does, monster. But that drain momentum to dodge the remainder of the Gul'dan damage. They're not able to pick up the counter kill, but they protect their keep. And I think this uh, is a very good chance to end the game here by Team Singularity. They played the series very well. In comes the second in Tomb. Misses the Drain Hope on a stationary target. Storm Shield comes out. They attempt to make the kill on Stitches, but the Twilight Dream will not finish him off. In comes a horrified to peel the hook on Razaf, but Karchi will take him out with that Twilight Archon damage and range. In comes the mush pit! There are no more interrupts! That, that is gonna be it with the Horrify already used and Malfuria dead. Gugas gets completely separated. The catapults are moving in, and that is going to be GG. And Singularity takes game number three and the series. <laughs>